welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about something not specifically powerlifting related, although we will get to training stuff at the end of the video, but that is how over the last two months I have basically tripled my daily step count. We'll get into why I did it, how I did it, and the impact that I feel it has had on my lifting. Now for the entirety of my fitness career, I have always prioritized weights. Even in my 15 years teaching from exercise, I mostly taught weight-based classes. I did teach uh, some cardio as well, but mostly it was they were strength training classes. So I've never been the typical girl cardio bunny. Um, my mom, on the other hand, has been obsessed with her steps for as long as I can remember. And I would always poke fun at her and be like, look, I'm getting my steps. Um, and I never really thought too much about it. I figured I'm an active person. Yeah, I'm sure I come close to 10,000 steps. Well, one day back in October, I opened up my health app, which is where I log my weight every day. And I don't know how I have used this app for as long as I have and never noticed that there's a step tracker included. And right above where I was listing my weight, it showed my steps for the previous day, which was 1900. And I was like, well, that's interesting. Let's, let's expand this. So I clicked on it and just kept scrolling. And never once did I come close to anything near 10,000. My average was actually around 2,500. So that was a giant slap in the face and kind of all I really needed to see uh, for it to be game on. Now that average is obviously only steps tracked when I have my phone. So there's likely more, but I knew there was no way I was getting that many more steps in the day, especially working a full-time office job. So after spending that day doing some additional research on step count, I decided to set my goal at 7,500. I actually learned that the 10,000 steps that is proclaimed everywhere actually was just a marketing campaign in the 1960s in Japan leading into the Olympics. And that, that you can get the same benefits from around 7,000 as the 10,000. So being that I do work full time, I have two boys and spend about one to two hours, five times a week lifting, that 7,500 seemed like a pretty attainable goal. And that's exactly what I did. The next day I clocked 8,000 steps and have hit my goal pretty much every single day since then. So how did I do it? At first, I just started by walking more outside. The weather was still nice at the time. So I stopped working through my breaks at work and was just taking walks outside. But then I discovered the whole world of YouTube walking channels. And that has been a game changer for me. I'll put some of my favorites up on the screen. There's a variety of different lengths or step counts. So they're super easy to squeeze in throughout the day or to kind of top off your step count if you are running short at the end of the day. Um, I remember I sent my mom one of the ones I had liked. It was called Get Fit with Rick. And she wrote back and she goes, oh, I've been doing Rick for years. And I was like, well, I'll take that out of context, mom. But sometimes I'll throw these in at the end of my lifting session if I have time. Um, my youngest son loves when I do my walking while he's playing his PlayStation. So I can easily fit in a 20 minute video while he plays a match of Fortnite and it's keeping me more active than just sitting there and watching him. I also started doing a short video before my warm up when I would come out to lift, but they would take around eight plus minutes and I really wanted to get that down. So I used my aerobics brain and realized that if you keep up the beat to 200 beats per minute, that's 1000 steps in five minutes. So I've been incorporating that for probably a month and a half now before my lifting sessions and it's pretty fast. There's not really too much you can do. I made a little time lapse this morning. I'll overlay here. It's pretty funny having five minutes condensed into 20 seconds, but that's also uh, an easy way to just throw in a thousand steps. I have a whole playlist of 200 BPM songs and I'll just set a timer for five minutes. Other small ways I've increased my step count is just by being more inefficient in day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, bringing in the groceries, I might make more trips than trying to like load up my arms. I'll bring just one bag in on each hand. We have two flights of steps to get up into the house. So multiple trips is more steps. Uh, taking the garbage and recycling out separate. Just small little things like that add up throughout the day. Now I don't have a fitness tracker. I really don't plan on getting one. So just like before, the steps I log are only the steps I manually enter from doing the videos uh, or my little five minute 200 BPM warmups um, or when I have my phone with me. I do find that I try and carry my phone around a little bit more than I used to just to be kind of more accurate with tracking my steps, but I'm okay with being consistently inconsistent because I know that overall I have drastically increased my step count. 
Now the biggest benefit I have noticed uh, actually comes in my work day. I used to find myself just sitting and sitting and oh, I'll get up and get some water here after I do this. Oh, now I'll do this, I'll do this. And it'll be three hours and I just haven't moved. And before I used to have to stand up and just kind of like, wait a second before I would move. And now one, I find myself getting up more frequently. And two, I don't have that tightness in my hips anymore that I used to. And I would say it's uh, positively impacted my lifting as well. I've spoken about how squats have kind of been on the struggle bus recently, but I don't relate that to this. I think that has more is more of a frequency issue. But I feel much more warmed up before my sessions now that I've added this five minute little walk before I do my normal warm up routine. I've also been able to increase my calories quite a bit in the last couple of months and my weight has basically stayed the same or gone down. Um, so that's just been another benefit to the increased activity. And while I guess you wouldn't call it cardio uh, in the traditional sense of doing 30 minutes or whatever, um, I like the little bursts of activity that keep me moving throughout the day and it doesn't even really feel like work. So overall, the increase in activity has had nothing but positive impacts on both my lifting and just overall day-to-day -day life. And I really haven't noticed any negative impacts. So now on to the training recap for week three of this block. Starting with day one squats, I just worked up to a single at 255, which moved fine. It was kind of in the middle of the prescribed range, uh, but I was more excited about the 240 for three that I did after it. It's not a PR, but with how things have been going with squats recently, I was not mad about 240 for three. Secondary squat day is doubles. And this was the first day in as long as I can remember that I actually hit the top end range, which was 245 for two. So again, not a PR, but I'll take it with the roller coaster that has been squats recently. Moving on to bench, uh, day one is the board press and Larson's. Uh, this day, I was just really struggling with the board press and my unrack. Uh, looking back at the videos after the fact with my husband, I realized I needed to adjust my positioning and my setup to make it so I wasn't pulling as far back. Uh, but I only ended up working up to 195. I wanted to do it for three singles. I did it for two and on the second one really used a lot of energy just to get it out of the rack. So I had my oldest come out and see if he could give me a lift off and he actually ended up just pulling it closer back to himself. So I just called it there and did two singles at 195. Um, moving on to the Larson's, I grabbed a video and this one makes me smile just because my youngest had come out. It was a family affair this day and he's just clapping in the back. Uh, but I like Larson's even though they're very humbling. Uh, it was three sets of six at 115, 120, and 125. Now the day two was a huge day for me. Uh, the double I worked up to 165 was actually over the range that was prescribed. And that isn't a PR, I've hit 165 years ago for a double, never to be done again. If you watch my veg video, I talked about how this like little bit of time where it was kind of like everything went right and then I was never able to hit those numbers again. Um, but I was just through the roof, like shaking with excitement after I hit that 165. So I moved on to the slingshot, five sets of two. My goal was 195 for two sets, uh, for to end the two sets, since last week I had done 190 for two sets and then 195. Well, I did 190, 195, was gonna go for 195 again, but I was able to grab my husband to come out and give me a lift off before he went to work. And I ended up hitting a lifetime PR with the slingshot of 200 for two that actually moved better than my 195. So I was just on cloud nine this day. The next day was just the volume day, 145 for a set of four, and then the back down work at 140 for three sets of four. The fourth day was kind of a disappointment uh, with how everything had been going. I was hoping for my single to be around 172, 175. Uh, so I did 165 and I was did what I thought was gonna be a little baby jump to 167. And I ended up just calling it there with how that moved. I didn't wanna fail anything. I did my back down triple at 157 for three. So again, less than last week, um, but I did end with a volume PR in the back downs, which was 150 for four sets of three. And those all felt good. And I know my history enough to know that sometimes when I have a, a low week, that usually means I'm gonna come back um, on like a little wave. So I wasn't disappointed that things were feeling heavy 
that week because I would rather them not feel heavy this week, which is week four. I'm actually getting this video out a little bit later than I wanted to. So I've already done an SBD day and my bench day, but I'm hopeful going into my final bench session that I can still end on a PR even after having that kind of low day in there. Now finishing off with deadlifts, day one, just the cluster, uh, five sets of one with 45 second rest. This week it was 265. Uh, for the main set and then another set at 250 all moved as planned moving into the main deadlift day i was really excited to come out because i had gotten a new pair of shoes as an early christmas present um my other ones were basically falling apart i uh, probably should have just been doing bare feet but the range was 310 to 330 i mentioned before i like to always shoot for that high end so i did 305 and then 320 and the 320 was such a grinder. I I wouldn't say I have a grip and rip style, but I definitely am pretty quick once I grab the bar and where my hands are or where they are. Um, and I swear it only ever happens whenever I'm going for something heavy that I will grab it in the wrong place and I just kind of muscled through it. So I was pretty disappointed with how that went, but thought I could get my act together and still grind out the 330 and it just wasn't there. So. I don't know if I had used too much energy on the 320 or what, but it was still five pounds more than last week within the range. Shouldn't be mad about it. Um, I was pretty proud with the back downs. It was 295 for three. Not a PR, but they moved good. And then the pause work was 230 for two sets of five, which I have been doing beltless. And when you get to those, they just feel like air as you work your way down. Um, so again, the wave, I'm not, not too mad about it and hoping I can pull something big tomorrow, which or two days from now, which will be my final deadlift day of this block. But that's it for the recap. Like I said, I've already started on week four, so I'll hopefully get a video out shortly after I have wrapped this up. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stick around for more content from a garage gym, powerlifting mom, showing you that you don't have to be the strongest to be strong.